Makers, it's Jo from Minerva. Today I'm going to show you how to sew some sheer fabrics. Sheer fabrics that you might have been avoiding so far are chiffon, crepe de chine, um, lighter weight crepes, charmeuse, uh, georgette. And all of those fabrics are really, really lightweight, so you need to pick the right pattern for the right fabric. I'm going to show you some sewing techniques for using sheer fabrics, and I'm going to take components and parts from the Sew Over It Pussy Bow Blouse, which uh, recommends chali fabrics, draped fabrics, rayon, viscose, crepe de chine and silk. Now I'm going to make a chiffon version so that I can wear a camisole underneath and have a sheer top. I'm not going to do the cuffs because that's where I'm getting into too much detail to get my chiffon to really lie nicely. You'd need some pretty top skills to put a, cut, a gathered cuff around a top so I've cut my top short sleeved with a pussy bow on the front. My number one top tip for sewing sheer fabrics is to pick a simple pattern that doesn't have too many features on it. Buttonholes are quite difficult to get in a really sheer fabric because it um, bunches up. You want something that you can just narrow hem and that's really floaty and has a simple shape. So number one, pick a simple pattern. Number two is to cut out on some tissue paper. So if you buy some gift tissue paper and lay it out on your table, then put your chiffon on top and um, smooth it all out. Then put your pattern piece on top of that and cut out the layers together. So pin it down so you should have a little sandwich of your pattern, your chiffon and your tissue paper underneath. And keep all of that together and keep your fabric on the table so that it's not draping or pulling down and giving you a wobbly shape even if you think you've lined up chiffon when you cut it and you hold it up you end up with a really wobbly shape and you can't understand why so pin it to some tissue and then it holds its shape when you're pinning sheer fabrics or chiffon it's good to use some silk pins they're really fine they've still got the glass head on so that you can press if you want to but they don't pierce and sh shoot the fabric run in the weave as much as larger pins Try and pin within the seam allowance as well. If you've got a really delicate uh, silk, then you might want to use some clips on the edge rather than putting holes in with pins. But silk pins are a good place to start. When pinning seams in chiffon, keep all of your fabric on the table. And I'm pinning horizontally so that my pins are within the seam allowance. If I go vertically, then my pin might be just going past and I might make a shoot in the weave. I'm also pinning horizontally because I want to use a seam gauge because I'm going to do a French seam and I want to keep measuring my seam line each time. When pressing chiffon, make sure you press. Don't drag your fabrics. If you drag your fabric and you roll your iron along, you will push it out of shape. So you really do need to just press. Some fabrics will press really well with just the steam of your iron, but it's best to check on a test piece. When you're marking fabrics, well, hopefully you're choosing a simple design, but when you're marking chiffon fabrics, just be careful if you make snips in the side for your markings because chiffons and georgettes fray quite easily so you you're going to exacerbate the fraying there so it's good to use tailor's tacks in chiffon and don't use a carbon paper because um, if you're marking a dart for example because it will just show through on the fabric it won't just be on the reverse it will show through to the other side so I'm going to use a tailor's tack rather than any other marking of chalk or a snip or anything. So I'm just going to run my double thread through there twice. I make a big loop on the one side and then I'm going to peel the pieces apart like this and snip in between. So now I have
threads on the front and threads on the other front. To set your machine up for sewing, you need a normal all-purpose thread, but you, just like when you've chosen silk pins, which are really sharp, you need a sharps needle. So this needle is really fine. It's um, a 60 or a 70. So that's the number across the top here. I like hemline ones because they have a coloured shaft at the top so I can put them back. So that sharps one is green, so I can put it back in the green packet. And it's all set up ready to sew. You might need to change your stitch length down. So if you normally have it on three, take it down to two, but you need to try on a test piece first. If you've got long stitches, they bunch up the fabric, but if you've got small ones, then it can just hop over the weave of the fabric with the sharp needle. Another thing you might want to experiment with on your machine is if you can change the tension of your foot because chiffon and georgette fabric is very, very sheer and very, very thin. So when it goes through the machine, the pressure between the foot and the foot plate isn't enough now because there's not enough bulk between the two. So then the fabric's skitting and sliding around between because there's no pressure between the foot and the foot plate. So if you can change your pressure of your foot and lower it, that's helpful too. You can try a lower tension as well on your machine to see if you get a better stitch with that. But it's always best to try on a scrap piece before you try on your garment. You might also notice I haven't been going forwards and backwards with this. I'm going to hand tie all of my ends because if you go forwards and backwards, you just chew the fabric down into the sewing machine. If you're finding you're getting a little bit of chewing at the beginning of each seam, start a little bit, a couple of millimetres off the edge. If you start right on the edge, it'll suck it right down into the foot plate. So hand tie all of your ends, it just takes a little bit longer. Um, that's the challenges and patience of a trickier fabric. To French seam, I'm going to have my fabric pieces with the wrong sides together, which feels really strange because you're used to putting right sides together. And I'm going to sew the seam at seven millimetres because I've got one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So I'm going to, we're going to take two lines. So my first line is going to be at seven and my second one is going to be at seven and I've got a millimetre there to play with on the fold. So I'm using a metal seam gauge. So it's got a magnet on the bottom. You can use your foot plate, but sometimes I find it a bit tricky to see. And you put the seam gauge on the foot plate. And now I'm going to take a seven millimetre seam allowance. going to trim this seam allowance. And then turn your fabric and pin again. So now the seam allowance will be inside this fabric. So this is the seam allowance and you encase it inside. You can press it, but I just find like a little finger roll is fine with chiffon. If I was doing a French seam on a cotton gauze or a cotton fabric, I would press it or lawn, but I'm just going to roll that with my finger because sometimes pressing it just makes it a little bit worse.
So this is a completed French seam. You can barely see where it is. And on the reverse, all the raw edges are enclosed. And when it's pressed out, it's really smooth. And then that seam allowance should go to the back. So French seaming is one way to treat your seams. You can also use French seams on sleeve. So you sew the sleeve wrong sides together and then turn your sleeves through and take that seven mil seam again on the inside. You will need to manage your fabric a little bit more because where you've got some easing or gathering in the head, you'll need to make sure that you've got that fabric nice and flat. It does take a little bit more easing with pins. So you can also French seam a sleeve. If you're not getting a great seam with just your foot or you can't adjust your pressure, you could also try using a walking foot. So see if that improves your sewing or not. If your fabric keeps getting sucked down into the foot plate, then a walking foot might just keep the fabric moving through along the feed dogs rather than getting sucked down inside. Another way to get a good seam if you've been trying things out and you're not getting a good seam is to try a waxy paper or grease proof baking paper. And you can put that over the feed dogs and your fabric on top because that protects your fabric from being gripped and scratched by the feed dogs, particularly if you've got a really delicate fabric in a solid colour. And then you sew through all of the layers. So the wax paper protects the fabric and takes it through the feed dogs at a more even rate. fabric is more slippy on the greaseproof paper so you might need to guide your fabric from the back as well so it doesn't slip and tilt but don't pull chiffon you really have to let it go through the machine at its own rate so don't pull or push the back just make sure that you're guiding it at its own rate <laughs> And then the wax paper can be pulled off. Just be careful that you're not going to pull your fabric. Just get a few little hairy bits on it, but you can just pick those off. And sometimes that helps your fabric to go through at a better rate. It really does depend on how your sewing machine handles chiffon. I'm showing you lots of different techniques on one garment, which I wouldn't necessarily do if I was making this. So I would probably French seam the sides as well. But I'm going to show you um, how you can get a really fine stitch on your overlocker. So you can overlock the edges so what you would see through the sheer fabric is just a line of stitching. If you cut with pinking shears, you see that sort of zigzag edge through the seam and that looks a little bit homemade. But if you've got a, an actual overlocked edge, it looks okay. So I've changed my stitch width to the narrowest it goes and I've made the stitches a little bit closer together so that they can get all those little hairs of the chiffon in. So I tried it on a little piece of practice fabric because I might need to change my differential feed. The differential feed is how fast it takes your fabric through the machine. So that's why you need to test. And it's so important when you overlock chiffon that you um, don't pull or 
push it through the machine. If you're getting a slight wrinkle, press this fabric now before you seam it. So when you do the other side, you'll have two overlapped edges. Press those with a, a cloth on top and then sew those two seams together because you know that they will be the same length. Because to a degree, if that's all rippled up, then you've eased that one in a little bit. So make sure you get both of your seams the same length before you start. If you have a four thread overlocker, you could go for a sh an overlock seam straight away. So it sews and overlocks all in one go. So then you wouldn't even have um, showing through your fabric the two sides of your seam pressed open. But you need to have your fabric cut quite accurately to do that because you've narrowed the uh, width of the overlocker to a very small amount. You've only got a small margin to collect the edge of the fabric. But that way, from the right side, you've only just got a sort of shadow of that tiny overlock behind. So it's a good one, that one, if you just want to just catch the edges. Of course, you're going to change the seam allowances of your whole top then because I've only used a four mil seam allowance and this has a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So if you can oversize your top a little bit and it will still be a good fit, that's fine. But if you're making something more fitted, which is unusual in chiffon, um, but that technique won't work. If you need to make sure you've got accurate seams for sizing, overlock both sides if you've got a bit of ease another technique you can use to stabilize your chiffon fabric is to use a little bit of spray starch so this is the hem of the sleeve piece i'm going to spray it with some spray starch and then I'm going to turn it up now, the first turn of a double hem before I sew it, because then it will make it easier to turn up a double hem. Again, it's important to try and press, but the starch will just give it a little bit of firmness. So because I cut this sleeve myself, because a short sleeve allows from a long sleeve, I'm going to give myself two centimetre hem. So that's going to be my first turn. And then when I sew it together, I'll open that fold out, sew down there, and then I'll have it just ready to turn over. I can show you that when I insert the sleeve. So a spray starch works quite well to stabilise the hems. You might want to just check if you're doing something really delicate like a wedding dress or a bridesmaid's dress that it definitely washes out of your fabric. Because we pre-pressed the sleeve hems with starch, I now don't have to try and get an iron in there to get a press on the uh, seam allowances. So I can just turn that down one more time and you will get a thicker seam allowance now and you may see that through the fabric this is a pattern fabric so you can't see it but if you've got a plain fabric so say you had a white chiffon you would see a seam allowance through the fabric and that might be desirable or you might want to make a really narrow hem so you can do a double folded hem like this using a bit of starch and a hot hemmer or pre-pressing your hem or you can try a narrow or rolled hem
Another top tip is to try and avoid using your unpicker because if you're using a really small stitch length like 0.2, then when you try and unpick it from a delicate fabric, you'll catch some of the threads and you'll get a shot through. So take your time with chiffon. Assume and understand that if you pick a pattern and you're going to have a go at using chiffon, there'll be some challenges, but to work slowly. If you know there's a seam that will be quite concealed, so on the back of the uh, Pussy Bow blouse, the centre back seam will sort of roll over and the front tie will be sort of bunched up, then you can sew your seam and cut it with pinking shears because the zigzag won't really show through because you'll have that bunch, you know, that will be a tie, so you, you'll have layers of fabric rippled around each other it's quite good because then you don't get the bulk on the back seam so if you don't want a bulky seam but you won't see it you can also try pinking shears my blouse has the tie on and short sleeves and now it's time to take a look at the hem which has slowly been unravelling as I've been working with it, I'm going to show you a narrow hem technique. Before you make a narrow hem technique, if you've used any seams pressed open like this, it's a good idea just to mitre the corners off. Only a very shallow point because we're only going to make a very small hem. We're not going to pin this hem all the way around, I'm just going to pin down where seam allowances are so that I can keep the bulk down. I'm only going to roll the hem by a tiny amount and the machine is going to take two passes to create the hem. The first pass is just a four or five mil seam allowance and we're going to trim it and pass it through again. So I'm going to turn the hem by 0.5, which is really small, that's half a centimetre. I'm going to do it with my fingers and I'm not going to stretch the fabric. I'm just going to keep the hem really, really small. When you've passed your hem through, on the first pass, you'll get a really raw edge. I've particularly got some uh, fraying pieces. And now I'm going to trim out all of that spare. I'm going to try and get it as close to the seam line as I can. And it's quite fiddly. And you really do need little scissors to do this. You can't do this with a big pair of dressmaking scissors because you'll run the risk of um, cutting your top. Any of these hairy bits, don't pull them, trim them. I'm going to trim that really close to the seam allowance all the way round. Take your time, it will make a lovely hem finish. So you're going to trim it out like this. And now on our second pass, we're going to turn it over again so now our seam line is on the wrong side and we will make a fresh line on the outside. So you need to make sure that you've got um, a matching thread in your bobbing case. So you're turning your first turn with the raw edge then folded into the inside. And you should have your stitch guide line which you can follow and you keep following that all the way round. So this is your narrow hem finished. It's really small. From the right side you can see one row of stitching. And from the wrong side, 
can hopefully see that thicker line where one line is on top of another but even if you just skipped off a little bit it doesn't affect the right side so that is how to narrow edge a hem it's also useful for ruffles so ruffles have a narrow hem on them and you can do those exactly the same If you're sewing with chiffon or sheer fabrics and you have a very voluminous hem then it's a good idea to let it hang for 24 hours before you hem it at all because some of the fabric will shift and move in fact it never really stops shifting and moving so you need to let it hang so that you can see where you've cut it on the cross grain it might fall out a little bit more before you hem it you might need to recut it again um, with the sharp scissors on a really flat surface with the weight of the garment on the table If you've chosen a pattern that has a facing, you're going to struggle with chiffon or georgette because the weight of the facing will drag down the inside and pull your neckline up. So if you make something that isn't really made for chiffon, a pattern, you need to, to add a binding around the neck. So you'll need to add a little piece of satin ribbon or some satin binding and have that folded to the inside so that all you see from the outside is a row of binding. If you have facings, then you'll see them and also they'll just keep pulling the outer garment because the facings will be stronger than the outer fabric. Here's the blouse finished, it's a sample blouse, it's got all different seam allowances and different techniques but I'll just show you a few. So if you're double folding your hem you can press that up before you sew the side seam and add some starch. You can French seam the shoulders as well as your seams. You can choose not to French seam and just overlock two pieces together, get a very narrow seam then. You can overlock your raw edges and sew a seam so you get the 1.5 seam allowance. And you have also learned today how to make a narrow hem. Inside the bow, I used a uh, pink and shears to finish it off so that I didn't create any bulk inside the fabric. And because it was patterned and folded double and sort of folded around, you can't see the pink and shear lines. So I've used lots of different techniques uh, using chiffon, georgette, or slippy fabrics like viscose and chamoose and crepe. Music.